Hello and welcome to the third introductory lesson of our module about Tocharian. In this video, you will get an introduction to the Tocharian language, including writing system, where manuscripts are located, and useful resources for learning the language. Let's start by looking again at the sources of Tocharian A and B. Tocharian A and B is part of a writing culture in the area which represents a local adaptation ascending from the large Indian Brahmi tradition. So, if we look at the writing system, it is a variant of the Indic Brahmi script. It is a special northern variant uh, of this area which is called the Gupta script. There is one important addition for Tocharian, the so-called Fremd Zeichen, which in transcription is marked as an A with two dots over it. And it was probably pronounced as something like E. A number of graphemes in the script are not natural to Tocharian, but these are used for writing Sanskrit loans. However, Sanskrit loans are very frequent in texts, and this means also that these graphemes occur frequently. We will now look at the writing system. As I said, the most important addition of the Tocharian version of the script is uh, the so-called Fremdzeichen, which in transcription is rendered as an A with two dots. Uh, however, if we start by looking at the consonants, we see that the order of graphemes follows uh, the Indian tradition. And uh, you see the, uh, the Fremdzeichen variants here, for instance, and here, and uh, here, and here. I will come back to that later. So, here we have the independent vowels uh, uh, with a, a, a long A, but it was probably not pronounced as a long A, it was something like A, A. And uh, the Fremdzeichen, uh, the Fremdzeichen here, the independent Fremdzeichen. And um, here we have uh, the long vowels and so forth the syllabic R, and, uh, and so forth. So, uh, these are the diacritics for changing the vowel quality of the syllabic graphemes, uh, exactly in accordance with the Brahmi tradition. And then uh, we have again continued the diacritics. So, here we see now how the graphs with the Fremdzeichen appear. So we have ta, te, we have na, ne, we have pa, pe, we have ma, me, ra, re, la, le, and sha, she, sha, she, and sa, se. Tsa and tse. Again, uh, this here, the tsa, uh, it's a phoneme which is specific to Tocharian, so it's not found in Sanskrit. The Tocharian Brahmi uh, script is part of a writing culture uh, which is found in manuscript in different languages of uh, all Eastern Central Asia. And uh, there are several similar writing systems and traditions. And uh, it's possible to trace the evolution and the change of the different variants in the different writing systems. Other uh, languages of the Tarin Gupta tree include for instance, uh, Sanskrit, as you see here, of course, it's continuing here in, the, in all the variants, as well as um, Saka, here and here, here, and of course then Tocharian. Now, 
uh, we should say something about the datings of the Carian texts. Uh, there are uh, precise datings that are found in texts from the first half of the 7th century Common Era, but only to Carian B. And we have dates, for instance, in caravan passes and uh, official documents. Uh, and uh, important are uh, the, the texts from uh, the king Svarna Tepe, and we'll see an example of that a bit later. We also have uh, Another method uh, is C14 dating, and finally we have uh, chronological dating by means of the so-called MQ writing, and we'll come back to that. So, let's look first at the dating within texts, the precise datings. So, this is a, a text in Tocharian B, uh, which is uh, written by a scribe of the king Svarna Tepe, and it says as you can see here, during the 21st year, in the fifth month, in the year of the great King Svarna Tepe. And we know uh, about the reign of King Svarna Tepe, which means that we can date these texts precisely. Uh, then we have the C14 uh, dating, which is also interesting. And uh, uh, this dating is, uh, have been done by Tashishu Tamai. Uh, a little bit more than 10 years ago, and they date Tocharian B texts between 400 and 900, and uh, Tocharian A texts between 700 and 1000, basically. And this is an example of a, a text in Tocharian B, Evinaya Vibanga text, which is dated by C14 between 394 and 473. Then we have the so called uh, MQ writing. The most archaic texts in Tocharian B are much less uniform with respect to language as well as ductus. And the first text to be identified with this specific type of language and writing, they were from the Ming uh, Kessel site, and therefore this specific writing style, as well as the linguistic forms that are connected with this style of writing, are marked by the abbreviation MQ. So MQ writing means that it belongs to the oldest state of uh, Tocharian B. And here is an example of a text. It's a fragment, as you see, but it has these specific MQ features. So, uh, the Tocharian corpus, let's look at the Tocharian corpus. It's uh, consists of manuscripts and wall paintings dated from around 400 to 1100 AD uh, with Buddhist content. They are found in cave monasteries in the desert sand in the region of eastern Turkestan or eastern Central Asia. And uh, texts in Tocharian A are basic literary texts with some exceptions, uh, which means texts with magic and medicine uh, in the Paris collection. Tocharian B, on the other hand, has all kinds of texts, and I will come back very shortly later on to what type of text we talk about. The total number of fragments is around 7,600. However, many are very fragmentary and almost impossible to read. Now, the location of documents. They are located in Berlin, uh, at uh, the Staatsbibliothek to Berlin, and uh, these texts are from Prussian expeditions, and uh, the texts were edited by Emil Sieg and Wilhelm Siegling, that were the uh, two uh, German researchers that first deciphered Tocharian. And then we have the Paris collections at Bibliothèque Nationale, which are from the so-called Peleo expeditions, and they have been edited by several uh, researchers. Then we have a uh, text collection at uh, London, at the British Library, and it's the so-called Oral Stein uh, collection. And it was, has also been published in a dissertation by Broomhead. And then we have text in St. Peace, uh, Petersburg, and there are a few publications. We have in Tokyo the so-called Otani collection, and we have some texts in Kessel, but uh, 
but uh, we don't know exactly uh, which they are. And then we have in uh, at the Museum of Yurumshi or the Regional Museum of the Province of Xinjiang uh, the well-known Yanqi manuscripts that contain the Maitreya Summit in Atake. And this is a very important text collection because it's complete. So uh, it's a general problem with Tocharian texts that they are often fragmentary, either burned or eaten by worms or uh, other kind of uh, fragmentization. So let's very quickly go through which uh, type of content that the texts have. In Tocharian A and B, we have uh, monastic disciplines, Vinaya. We have uh, doctrinal texts or Sutra. We have law of reflections, uh, reflections, Abhidharma. We have narrative texts. We have Jatakas and Avadanas. It's this nice little stories about the births and the past lives of Buddha. We have Nataka, that's drama. We have poetry and epic, Kavya. And we have uh, lyric, Stotra. And then we have science and technique or technology. And finally, grammar, astronomy, medicine, dream interpretation and writing exercises. And finally, Manichaean literature. So uh, we have parallel texts and the parallel texts, they are very important uh, when you work with Tocharian because Tocharian is sometimes very difficult to understand and precisely we don't know the meaning of many words. So if we have parallel texts it's much easier to understand what the texts are about. So we have parallel texts in uh, Sanskrit uh, and uh, it's Vinaya, Sutra, Abhidharma, medical texts, Jataka, Vedana, Kavya, Stotra, grammar, astronomy, medicine and dream interpretation. So we, actually for most of the texts in Tocharian we have Sanskrit parallels, but there are many texts that don't have any parallels because there is also an independent tradition in Tocharian. So we have also parallel texts in Uyghur, basically the Maitreya Summit in Ataka, as well as in Chinese, in Cottonese and in Tibetan. So uh, we also have so-called profane documents or documents that are uh, have uh, no non-literary documents. So we have historic documents like we saw the uh, the, the Swana Tepe uh, manuscript that we saw before. And economic, administrative and juridical documents. These are all uh, or many of them are caravan passes or, uh, that, or legal documents and things like that. And then we have monastery letters, business letters, processes and caravan passports. And finally, we have graffitis and inscriptions in situ in, uh, in the caves. And, uh, and, and finally, of course, glosses in Sanskrit uh, texts in Tocharian. So this is a text sample of a very famous Tocharian text. Uh, it's a love letter uh, or the so-called love letter. Uh, it's interesting because it is an example of a text uh, that is not part of a specific literary, literary tradition. So it's apparent that there was a monk or someone who was uh, uh, good at Tocharian and good at writing uh, that improvised and wrote a poem just by himself or herself. And that's quite clear that uh, it's a unique document. So, um, Another very well-known text in Tocharian A is the story of the mechanical doll. Uh, the reason why it is important is that it is almost completely complete. So there are a few texts uh, that are not broken and where we have several manuscripts in a line that contain the same text. And, uh, the mechanical doll is like a complete story. Uh, it's part of a Punyavanta uh, Jataka text. So there are 25 uh, manuscripts uh, that are uh, that belong together. Unfortunately, 
uh, the originals are lost, so we only have uh, very old copies of the texts. So uh, in this uh, in, in this lecture later on, when we look at syntax, uh, we will come back to this text about the mechanical doll because it's a very nice text text, but it's to carry an A. So let's look at the corpora and dictionaries that are uh, important to use when you try to work with tocharian. First we have uh, the electronic corpora uh, and the most important is the satum corpus. It contains also uh, uh, tagged, uh, tagged texts and uh, a dictionary, a little mini dictionary, and it also has uh, almost all of the texts. Uh, it's work in progress, which means that not all texts are yet completely translated and edit edited. But it's a very important resource for working with Tocharian. So the Titus um, Tocharica uh, project uh, is, uh, of course, now a, a bit obsolete uh, when we have the CETOM uh, resource. But it's also important because uh, they, uh, the Titus project uh, deciphered and digitized all of the Tocharian texts and it's part of the CETUM uh, corpus. So uh, let's move over to to uh, Tocharian A. Uh, Tocharian A texts of the Berlin collection were published in 21, 1921 by Siegen Seeling. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the, they were never edited or uh, translated, so it was only uh, the texts that were published. But um, there is an, uh, a dictionary, a half dictionary, and also an electronic corpus, with, which is a dictionary, and it's also cross-referenced with um, the Setum corpus, and it's called CDIC, the Comprehensive E-Dictionary of Tocharian A. It's not yet open, but it will be in 219. So, if we move over to Tocharian B, uh, we have the text editions by uh, Siegen Siegling that were also, uh, of course, uh, edited by Werner Thomas. And uh, they are not complete, they don't cover the, all uh, the, the entire language. So, Therefore, when working with Tocharian B, it's important to go back to the Setum uh, corpus because the Setum corpus contains references to all translations of all texts, and that's very important to have because translations uh, are very fragmented. They are found in all different kinds of publications everywhere. But there is a dictionary by Douglas Adams, of course. It's an, uh, it's an etymological dictionary and it has references to most texts, and uh, it's a very important resource for to carry and be. So, um, uh, if we talk about grammars, there are basically two grammars, one German grammar, and uh, that's the uh, Elementarbuch by Krause Thomas. Uh, it has two volumes, one with grammar and one with uh, uh, a little mini dictionary and texts. And then there is uh, uh, Crestomati by uh, Georges Pinot. It's in French. It's also a, a grammar with texts that can be used for the language. So uh, other important resources for studying Tocharian is uh, a book by Melanie Malsan on the verbal system. The verbal system is very complex and it's important to uh, have a resource to find the sources of the verbs because of the, they are the most tricky part of the language. And then Instrumental Tocharica, it's, a, it's an edited volume that deals with uh, different issues that has to do with the text themselves and the, the documentation. So, thank you for listening to this introduction about the Tocharian language. I will now give the floor to Hannes Fellner, who will introduce you to the phonology and the morphology of Tocharian, and we will see each other again in the lessons discussing the morphosyntactic structures of Tocharian.